Welcome to lesson two of Discovering the Affair. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about the topic of should I stay or should I go? Mm. And I think oftentimes, you know, we think that if there has been an affair that takes place, we're going to call it quits. Like that is the thing that we will not stand. We've been saying it since the beginning of mm -hmm. our marriage. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that the affair is the deal breaker. And it's just not true. And the reason for that is because, well, there's lots of reasons for it. But one of the reasons is that it's you love the person. There's emotions involved. Other reasons could be financial reasons. Um, you know, financial reasons is a big one. If you have assets that are tied to the other person, that needs to be considered. Children, when you have children, what are they going to think? How are they going to experience this? So all these things go through your mind when you discover mm -hmm. an affair. And so the question becomes, should I stay or should I go? And how do we come about making a decision when you have all these things swarming around in addition to just being emotionally up and emotionally down every five minutes? Yeah, I think when dealing with should I stay or should I go, you kind of kind of you have to kind of look at it from a renter owner perspective. When you're dating, it's much like renting, right? Uh, it's easy to say, you know what, this is just not working out. I'm going to cut my losses and move on. But like your point, like your point is, when you're married, it's almost like ownership home ownership there's so many other things involved yeah and so the decision you make is not just for yourself because you have an entire family to consider you know how old or young are those children what about the finances what about what we've built together uh over the course of the last x amount of years whether you're in year one or year 25 i mean there's many things to consider and what about i still love him i right. still love her I think a lot of times we already knew that there were problems in the marriage. We didn't necessarily know what they were. And the affair is the manifestation of problems undealt with. Not saying that it's okay, not making excuse mm -hmm. for the affair, but just as having a bad attitude, yeah. speaking, cussing your spouse out, you know, um, drinking and other things that impact a marriage are the result of issues undealt with. The affair is the same. Yeah. And I think that when you're in the conversation, you're in the valley of indecision. Do I stay? Do I go? You're looking at so many th different things. Like, how is your partner showing up? Are they answering all my questions? Are they, you know, uh, uh, responding to all of my demands and commands in the relationship? Yeah. And if they don't operate perfectly right. according to my expectation, I'm out. And so we're very short tempered. Uh, we're very emotional. And I always say when you are drenched in emotions, that is the worst time to make a life decision. Because think about it, as they say, uh, different strokes for different folks, yeah. but different ways on different days. And you were talking about how one minute you're up, one minute you're down, one minute you're happy, one minute you're sad one minute you're hopeful mm -hmm. and then the next minute you feel as if there Hopeless. is no hope yeah right and so when you're vacillating back and forth with all of these emotions why would you ever put yourself in a position to make a decision Absolutely. i think that the best decision that you could ever make when you're trying to figure out what the future of your marriage is is to make no decision at all yeah and so rather than forcing yourself to make some immediate decision whatever decision you make you're going to wind up regretting it anyway because if you make it in anger and in rage because of something that just happened, best believe two, three days from now, you're going to reconsider. Yeah. Or if you've made this absolute statement that I'm not going anywhere, we're going to get through this, we're going to fight it through. Well, two days later, when your partner's getting on your nerves or when you're reflecting upon what happened now, all of a sudden, you know what? I don't think I can do this. Absolutely. Because if you flip the coin because you said, you know, anger and frustration, that's one personality, not meeting demands like they're going to do this or else or I'm going to have it my way or the highway. Yeah. You also have other personality types that are very, very docile and laid back. And it's just like, I'm going to do whatever it takes to make it work. I'm mm. just obviously it was me. I was the wrong person in the marriage. So whatever it takes, I'm just going to be quiet. I'm going to make be perfect. I'm going to fix everything I've done wrong. I'm going to accommodate he or she. And when that doesn't work, because that was never the issue in the first place. But that's always been your personality. Actually, that might have been part of the problem, why this person feels like they can run over you, right? Mm -hmm. But when that doesn't work and the person still doesn't respond, if you've made the decision to just stick it out no matter what, who's hurting in that process? Mm. And so I think that what Hassani said is key about not making any decision at all because what you're going to do instead is you're going to submit to wise counsel. And that's what you're doing right now by being that's in this right. program. You know, when you allow the program to make the decision for you, you're putting yourself in a much better position. Because the reality is today, the future looks bleak. 
You don't know what tomorrow may bring. You only have limited information and knowledge about the situation, about the affair, about your partner, about the dynamics of your relationship. But as you go through these modules, as we take you through this journey, uh, you're going to discover things that you didn't know before. And so a lot of the rage that you now have you may learn to begin to have empathy and compassion Absolutely. for the very person who hurt you. Now, that may sound crazy yeah. hearing this right here, right now. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you something. It's true. Uh, when you begin to do the work and you begin to have real dialogue with your partner and you're allowing each other to speak from the heart about your fears, about your greatest concerns, about all of the insecurities that you may have been hiding, whatever it is that you've been going through in your relationship, you begin to realize, wow, okay, so this is why that happened. And this is what's been going on in our relationship for the last 10, 15 years. And another key thing is this, oftentimes it is very common for the betrayed partner to blame. Now, either they're blaming themselves in taking full responsibility for everything that's happened, which is unhealthy. They're completely blaming their partner, removing themselves from any form of accountability in the relationship, which is a major problem, or they're blaming 100% the affair partner. The affair partner may be just as blindsided as you as the betrayed partner. So the reality is when you really dissect this thing, you begin to see, okay, these are the things that have been taking place underneath the surface that I haven't been aware of, Absolutely. that my partner hasn't been aware of, yes. and now it's all coming out. Absolutely. And what you're going to find is that you're also going to learn a lot about yourself. Yes. You are going to discover yourself in a way that you've never even considered looking at. Because you look out of your own eyes. So you're not looking at yourself 360 degrees around like your spouse might be or other people who know you might be. And so you're going to get a chance to be very introspective during this process, mm -hmm. seeing where you showed up, where you did not show up, and then actually learning how to show up in certain circumstances. So in essence, you will become a better person through this program and your spouse will too. You know, it's so interesting you say that mm -hmm. because many of us are oblivious to who we really are. Yeah. One of the things that we believe is that your spouse is your mirror. Because to your point, your eyes look outward, not inward. So you want somebody who's constantly looking at you. And your spouse has a front row seat in your life. And so if they're saying things, hurtful things throughout this process, because listen, the truth hurts, but the truth also heals. Yeah. And so if you're completely open and honest and allow your partner to share certain truths that you may have denied for quite some time, yeah. you're gonna begin to discover things you about are. you that you weren't really privy to. Yeah, and you're gonna you're going to have to be open to it. Hassan and I had to be open to it. What he said is so true. The truth hurts, but it also heals. And you can get through it. You can get through it. You will get through it. So just think about the fact that you've been carrying all this baggage around. Just imagine a suitcase packed jammed and crammed with stuff so much to the point that you have to sit on it to close it shirts are hanging out belts are hanging out ties are hanging mm -hmm. out everything is hanging out of the suitcase that you cannot close it is so full of stuff that you've been dragging around your, your whole life and you've picked up more stuff along the way you're going to unpack all of that mm -hmm. in this process and you're going to empty that case and so you're going to be have to become transparent with your spouse. Your spouse will become transparent with you. And who else to be transparent with? If I can be naked with my husband, I should be able to be emotionally That's right. naked with my husband. And then you want to get to the point where you can also be spiritually emo, uh, emotionally naked or spiritually naked with your partner. So grab the action guide and start working through this next lesson. There are some questions that you need to answer at the end and come prepared with those questions answered to our next group session. And we'll see you there.